Welcome back to the Cape Fox 14 Morning News. I'm here with New Mexico State Climatologist Dave Dubois for today's community conversation. First off, how are you this morning? Thank you so much for coming in. I'm doing great, but my heart really is, is, is aching for the people there in Rodoso. Yeah, just a devastating situation across that part of New Mexico this morning. And of course, like I said, today is the biggest story across the borderline this week. Mm -hmm. And it's of course the South Fork and the Salt Fires up in the Rodoso area. Both of those places spread extremely quickly once they ignited on Monday morning. Why did we see such a rapid spread of those wildfires on Monday? Yeah, we're well, looking at the conditions of the area, looking at it going all the way back to, to, to the winter in the, in the spring. You know, the, the area of the Sacramento Mountains, we're in the very northern part, we're in um, moderate drought, and as you go further south, we go into severe drought and even worse. Mm -hmm. And so we've got really dry conditions. We, in, in the mountains in Sierra Blanca, we had good snowpack. However, as you go further, further elevation, it just, just it, it's dry. Um, we've had, we're right now, we're at about 30% of average for the calendar year mm -hmm. um, from the um, cooperative site in Rodoso. And same way with other areas in there. So it's, and we've gotten some really high temperatures. We broke records last week. It was at 93, I think, was at, um, at the co-op there at, uh, in Rodoso. That was a record. And it, on top of that, we've got um, low relative humidities. We've had high gusty winds a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. um, so all those, and in addition to it, the fuels in the area are dry. We have this thing called the energy release component. It's like at a 97 percentile, which is like really high, really high. So any, that basically means that if you light that anything out there, it's going to have a lot of energy. And, mm -hmm. and so that's like the worst case scenario for, for a lot of people is all those conditions are making it worse and easily fire can spread really fast. Yeah, kind of created a perfect storm, unfortunately, yeah, for this unfortunately. kind of thing. Yeah, and as you were talking about the dry weather, it continues to provide the dangerous fire conditions. So we have moisture coming back into the area today in the way of thunderstorm activity. That may sound like a good thing because we're getting some moisture, maybe some fire relief, but why not that may be a good thing for, to, for wildfires to experience? Right, well, I mean, if it was just a precipitation, we welcome lots of precipitation. And it, with, with that cloud cover and, and higher relative humidities, slow the fire down. However, with the, with, the, like, with the threat of thunderstorms, they can pop up just about anywhere. We know that they're going to occur somewhere. Mm -hmm. But you know, right now, the, the fire planners are, are thinking, you know, southwesterly winds. Winds are blowing from southwest toward the north, northeast. So that's kind of the, the fire progression. You can see that on the fire maps. However, with a thunderstorm that can pop up, you know, behind the fire or ahead of the fire, you, we get um, downdrafts and what they call outflow boundaries and as they decay and that that can actually make winds go the opposite direction mm -hmm. and very quickly within say even 10-15 minutes you can get a gust of wind to kind of blow the winds in, a, in, a, in an area where it didn't forecast and so that's really dangerous not only for fire behavior but for the firefighters themselves the blowing the smoke as well as the fire um, in, in a direction they weren't planning so it's, 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 a, very, it's a high hazard situation um, especially if it's a if it's a strong wind that can blow. So those are, those are the there's a it's a double-edged sword in terms of high humidities, but then this, the threat of fi of um, thunderstorms make it harder to to fight fires. Right, like you said, like the winds become so erratic, you can't yeah. predict which way they're going to go. They can be different in one area and then a completely different direction in the other because the thunderstorms are so isolated. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's and it's in a complex terrain, meaning there's lots of. Uh, valleys and mountains, mm -hmm. and so the, it's, it makes it even harder for to kind of plan out. And that's that's what they do. The the, the firefighting teams there, um, the commanders there, they they know all those things. But it's there's an unknown factor with the with the thunderstorms. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're talking about the danger of that today. And I do want to point out for those looking to find the latest drought information and wildfire risk in their area, where can they find that information? Where would you recommend to go? And do you have any wildfire safety tips for folks out there to follow to stay prepared? Yeah, a few, a few tips. Um, for drought, there's a website that it's a national website called drought.gov. Mm -hmm. And that's a source of how, how, how bad drought is and where you live. And there's a you can put in your, your zip code um, for uh, for health, uh, I think we, we mentioned earlier on, on the news about air quality. That's a big deal um, with, the, with the smoke going from the no north, uh, southwest to northeast. Uh, however, like with the thunderstorms, it could change, change direction. So you, you could be in good air quality right now, but it could, could get worse. Um, so for the, the latest in, in weather information, I, our, our recommendation is to go to weather.gov. That's a, a good one-stop place to look at forecasts for any area and to look at not only that but uh, you know drought conditions as well as fire 
fire conditions. And so I think that especially right now, we're still in very high, high temperatures. So high temperatures, air quality, those are all bad things for, you know, our, our human bodies. So we need to be, be uh, on top of things and look at the weather. Yeah, and even though we're going to see relief over the next few days, there's more triple digits. And we're, not gonna, we're still going to be in a drought by the time we get to the end of the weekend. And of course, still going to be dealing with the heat going into next week as right, well. Right. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching this community conversation. If you want to see past community conversations, you can head to our website, kfoxtv.com. Dave, thanks so much for joining me. And of course, stay safe out there. We'll be right back after the short break. Yeah.